everyone. Uh, welcome to our video version of our normal painting class at Clearwater Library. I'm going to kind of give you a rundown of what you need for the next um, couple of classes. Um, if you get these supplies, they should last you for the, at least the next two or three paintings. You will need a square canvas for each painting. You can repurpose an old one. Um, you can get this as a standard size that Michael sells like um, multiple packs of. Uh, if you want to go smaller, that's fine. Just you might want to change your brush size, go smaller with your brushes. If you want to go larger, that's also fine. You just might want to anticipate using extra paint. Um, as far as paint goes, I just got the Artist Loft and we're just getting in them in primary colors. Um, it's the cheapest brand at Michael's. It will last you for a while. Um, the only one you may re need replacing is this uh, titanium white because we will use it for mixing quite a bit. Um, but you're just going to need a red. This one is brilliant red. A yellow. This one is deep yellow. And a blue. This one is ultramarine. Um, from there we can mix just about anything. You will also need a little bit of black. Uh, you will not need as large of a tube as this though, so you can get a smaller tube. Um, I just have a leftover tube of basics I'm just gonna use from. Um, but they do small, uh, sell smaller tubes at Michael's as well. Um, as for brushes, you just wanna have a nice variety of brushes. This was like a $5 three pack. It has a nice thick brush for when doing larger fields. Um, a thinner brush for if we're going to outline anything, and then sort of a medium brush just to kind of fill in smaller areas. Um, so big, medium, and small. You'll also need a paper plate for mixing your paint. Um, you will be able to reuse it if you want, or you'd have a fresh one each time, it's up to you. Um, a cup of water. I don't suggest using a drinking cup, uh, the paint will stain it. I recommend using like a solo cup or a mason jar you don't mind ruining. Um, anything you got around the house that you don't mind using. Uh, paper towel is also really helpful to dry your brush in between steps. Um, and you may want to lay down something beneath your painting if you are worried about getting anything on your table. Um, but that's all we'll need for this class. Uh, and you should be able to reuse a lot of this stuff for the next couple of classes we're going to do via video. So today we are going to do a little beach scene, sort of um, an aerial like looking down at a shore view. Um, normally I have a painting set up for you to look at, uh, but this one since the format is a little bit different, we are going to just paint it from scratch together, which will be pretty fun. So the first color we're going to mix is the color for the sand. It's going to be primarily white. It's going to be a nice light color. So maybe we want to put like a quarter size dollop, I would say. And we're just going to put a tiny, tiny bit of yellow. If you are not comfortable putting it directly onto the white to mix, if you're not sure of the proportions, just put a little tiny dab of it off to the side, and then you can kind of just incorporate it with your brush um, until you get the color you like. So we're just going to take a little bit of this and sort of mix it in here. You don't need anything super dark. Just need a little bit sandy yellow color. Um, none of these paintings that we'll be doing for the next couple of months are going to be like super realism so we can kind of uh, play around with the colors and stuff. It's not a, no pressure. It's getting nice and light. A little, a little, a little bit darker. I'm up using all my yellow here. We're going to paint um, this corner, bottom corner of the canvas, but we're going to make sort of a like a loose, curvy shoreline, like so. Now, don't worry about your edge being super harsh. Um, it can be nice and soft. Casting a shadow. Let me move these. There we go. So just 
just gonna take this light sandy color. I'm just gonna cover this whole bottom half here. Um, if you paint slower than me, which is totally fine, um, you can pause the video and fill it in. Uh, we will be pausing for when we are letting the paint dry in between steps. So there will be space where I'll let you know where you can just pause it and catch up. That's actually the fun thing about the video format is that you can come back to this later. You know, you can take breaks. You don't have to fit it all in the allotted amount of time, which is kind of cool. Okay, so loving how this is looking. I'm gonna make it a little darker toward the bottom. So we're gonna put another little dab of the yellow, or if you still have yellow left on your plate, just pull from that. And from this bottom out, I'm gonna make it a little darker and just kind of blend it out, maybe to about here. So the paint on your canvas is still wet, so you should just be able to work it in softly with your brushes. If you're having trouble blending, if your paint's drying really quickly, or you're seeing um, too many brush marks, you can always dip back into this sandy color and just kind of add to what you're doing. Kind of blend it out. a little water coming in this way so we're going to mix a much lighter blue than what we have right out of the tube and we're also going to mix a little bit of yellow into it to make it more of a um, aqua than a straight blue here so let's start with this white and yellow that you were mixing we're just gonna add to that we'll add a little more white like this to the sand same color and again if you don't feel comfortable putting the blue directly on if you just kind of want to ease yourself into that color just put a little off to the side um, you can leave this yellow and everything it right in your brush we're just gonna see what we get here put a little dab of blue this is a nice light blue but it's a little cool so we're gonna add a little bit of this yellow into it. Still pretty light, so we're gonna add some more blue. It's always easier to add color in than to have to dilute it and you end up wasting a lot of paint. So it is nice to just kind of add it slowly. Blue's still a little cool, so we're gonna add a little bit of yellow. And just keep it off to the side. So we're gonna incorporate it slowly.
much nicer. Okay. So it's still fairly light, which is going to work because we're going to make it much lighter here and then have it get a little darker as we go. Kind of the same way we did with the sand. It's just going to go into the opposite direction. So you're going to start by laying down this color sort of in the middle, not quite up to this edge yet. a little slower um, feel free to just give the video a pause for a second I like to throw this paint onto the canvas so I do go a little quicker I do think I work a little bit quicker because the acrylic does dry a little quicker um, but if you find yourself wanting to take much more time um, you can always get a slow dry medium. Uh, Liquitex, Liquitex makes one at Michael's. It's, um, I think it's like $11. You just put a couple drips onto your paint and it keeps it from drying as fast. Um, you can, if you use enough of it, you can kind of mimic oil painting a little bit, but it will take, obviously the more of it that you use, the slow dry medium, um, the more, like the much longer it'll take to dry. It will give the paint a little more um, viscosity and like it will, it'll blend really easily, but it will, you will have to wait much longer between all of the steps. So something to keep in mind, if that's something you wanna try. So we got to this break here and we kinda wanna blend this over the sand. We wanna make it a little bit lighter um, so I'm put a little white off to the side here. I'm gonna just dip my brush in as it is. And sort of blend like this over top. Kind of where all that foamy sea foam goes. Right over the sand. And you can be more textured with this. You don't have to blend it quite so smooth if you like to put a little bit of texture in your paintings, that's fine too. Now this is a good place to do that because it will look really nice. Um, if you find your brush brushes dragging just a bit, you can always dip a tiny bit of water and you can kind of smooth things out. I don't recommend using a ton of water um, because you can pull paint up that you've already put down. So you just want to be pretty delicate if you do that. And again, if you, the more water you use, um, the longer it does take to dry in between steps. So that in mind as well. Alright, so we got this blended here. We're going to take a little more of our darker blue, um, kind of mix it onto our brush, what we have in our brush, and we're going to blend a little bit from the corner, the same way we did with this sand over here. we did um, down here with the sand if you find that this paint is drying a bit too quickly for your taste and you, it's not quite blending the way you want um, just dip back into that medium blue color and you can sort of blend like that blending is much easier if you're doing wet paint into wet paint than having to do uh, dry layers you won't see your brush marks quite as much 
but some people like that. Some people like a lot of texture in their paintings and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just really personal preference. If you like things really smooth, or if you like to see the brush marks, see that it's a painting. All right, um, this is a good place to pause if you wanna let this dry. We do wanna let it dry completely before putting in the next step, all right? Um, remember to put your brush in the water, like so, kind of get some of this paint out. Um, this paint will dry pretty quickly and it will um, gum up your brushes if you don't keep them cleaned in between each step. All right, we'll uh, pause here and then we'll come back when this is all dry. All right, we are back. Um, this painting should be about dry by now. Um, we're going to mix our next color to uh, map in some seashells here on this little peach. We're going to mix like a lavender color. So the way we're going to do that, um, obviously red and blue make purple. So we're going to do a little dab of blue and a little dab of red. Um, side by side, don't mix them quite together yet. We're gonna mix like a nice purple and then we're just gonna lighten that purple. So kind of decide if you want it to be more red heavy or more blue heavy. Obviously like one's warmer, one's cooler. Um, we're gonna start with just mixing equal parts of both. Kind of see where that gets us. darker purple. If you still have white on your palette, you can kind of pull from that and kind of see what color it's starting to turn out as. Um, by lightening up, you'll be able to see where you're at. It's actually looking pretty nice. It's like a nice muted purple here. Not too blue, not too red. Very natural looking color, like a shell stone type color. Um, we're gonna lighten it up a little more, just take a little bit more white. Um, you might wanna put more on your plate if yours is dried up. But yeah, if your uh, lavender is looking too red, you can just add a tiny bit of blue and a little bit of white in. If it's looking too blue, to slate colored, you can add a tiny bit more red. I just add it slowly, that way you don't have to kind of start over here. So you're not gonna need a ton of this color. Um, we're just gonna use it as the under color for some of these shells. So we're gonna put like a clamshell shape right about here. So we're gonna start, kind of mark where we want that bottom corner of it to be. and sort of do like a fan shape like that. I'm going to kind of just connect them like this. Fill that in. It's okay if it's textured or if it's got some weird color streaks, we're gonna be adding to this. And shells are pretty textured and have all kinds of little colors in them, so it's really not gonna look bad. to get kind of a it doesn't need a super clean edge but I'm gonna make it as clean as we can it's okay if it's a little lopsided shells are not perfectly symmetrical all the time sometimes they're bigger on one side and that's totally cool but we do want to keep this general shape kind of like a rounded triangle shape Smaller brush, um, go for that. 
I like painting with the bigger brushes a lot of the time. Um, so you don't always have to copy what brush I'm using. Um, it's really personal preference. A lot of people like using the smaller brushes because you kind of ease yourself in, you have a little more control. Um, but I do like the gestural aspect of painting with a larger brush and kind of figuring that out. Again, if you see things like this where your brush is dragging a little bit, you can just dip it in some water, give it a little more fluidity. Get a nice little shell shape. I am gonna use my smaller brush to even out that edge though. Just an awkward angle to get. last shape, shell shape, we're going to do It's like a little periwinkle shape. So it's kind of more like a cone with a rounded bottom. So you can use the edge of your brush, kind of draw it out like so. And in the bottom, we're going to round it just a little bit like that. Again, these don't have to look perfect. We're gonna be putting other details on top. This is just gonna be the bottom color. So if you're having trouble with your paint kind of pulling up um, when you paint over it, it, sometimes happens. It depends on how thick you put your paint on, if it's totally dry how much water you've used. Um, you can always, the fun thing about acrylics is you can let it dry and then start a new layer and it will solve that problem. So don't be afraid to take breaks and come back to it. Oh, we are not gonna let this dry completely before we start putting these little details in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little white we're just gonna add it right to our lavender color, right on top like that. Now you can use your same brush. You don't have to rinse it. Um, we are just gonna kind of mix into that white. You don't have to use the whole glob. You can just kind of mix as you go. Um, we're just making a much lighter color of that color we've been using. We're gonna just lighten it up so that we can hit some highlights on these shells. You might want to mix with your larger brush just because it's easier, but you can paint with your smaller brush for this part because it is a little more detailed. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my smaller brush here. So I'm going to use this light color and put some details on these shells. So on this one, we're going to make the little ridges run like with the curve of the shell. These are just kind of loose details, kind of just real quick. Nothing too extreme. shell but we're going to run it this way so if you want to start in the middle just kind of do a nice line down do on the other side I might use my bigger brush for this one make these lines a little bigger use the edge of the brush you just kind of want to follow the lines of the shell. Again, these don't have to be perfect. The shell, not a big deal.
Okay. I'll switch back to my smaller brush. Um, for this periwinkle shape, they have an opening at the bottom here, and then they're kind of twist all the way up to the top. So we're going to start by kind of uh, doing like a little bit of an S like that. I'm going to just leave this open down here. Maybe do like a little like mark just to kind of show the edge of it. And then we're just going to follow that curve up like that little mini kind of S curves until we get to the top. You want to dip back into a little more of that white and kind of just hit like areas of the shell, maybe the edges like that. You can feel free to add whatever contrast feels right to you. shells here. You want to make sure these um, little textures stand out, so you want to go back and kind of hit some of these areas. Go for it. We're going to mix our next color because we're going to add a cool starfish up here. And we're gonna do more of an orange color. So let's rinse our brushes. Kind of turn our palette a little bit to where we got some more space. Um, we're going to take a little red, a little glob like that, a little yellow. Kind of do them side by side. We're gonna mix a nice orange color. So with oranges, I like them to be a little more yellow heavy. So we're actually just gonna take maybe half of this red, but most of this yellow and mix it together. We're gonna lighten it a little bit some white off to the side here that we can pull from. Just kind of mix it in. You want to kind of add it slow. You don't want to make it too light right away. I actually think that this color is nice. Like a nice soft pastel orange. If it's looking too dark, add a little white. If it's looking too white, add a little more yellow back in. This will be really nice. So for the starfish, uh, we're gonna start him right here. We're gonna sort of just with the side of our brush map out where you want the arms to go. You obviously kind of think of a star. It's got these five points, but this is. They are not perfect stars, and we kind of want ours to look like it's you know bumpy, and so. Don't stress about it being perfect in any way. You want to kind of show where the little arms are going to go. And then we're just going to do this. Sort of make those um, rounded edges where the arms meet in the middle. Just make that curve. Fill that in. And then basically we're just going to follow that line, but plump up these little arms like that. And to be kind of rounded on the edges, you don't want them to have a point at the end. Um, that's not the kind of starfish we're making.
I'm gonna make sure the arms just kind of taper off. If you need to use your smaller brush for this, that's fine. You can always outline it with a smaller brush and then just fill it in with a larger brush if that helps speed it up. Um, you can also pause the video and kind of take your time drawing it out. No need to rush. Cool, once we have this starfish, um, we're gonna use this orange on the shells we've already painted. Um, you can let these dry, um, but by now they might be pretty dry. I think mine are pretty dry. So we're just gonna use that brush we're using. Or you can switch to the smaller brush if you like. I'm just gonna stick with this. Um, and we're gonna add some accent marks to these shells, kind of give them a little more color. So I kind of went in between um, these ridges up here. I'm gonna do a little bit at the bottom. I'm gonna do like this, kind of make it look like it has a stripe. Do at the bottom as well, a little straight. These are pretty gestural, they're just more of a little illustrative take on a shell, so don't feel like it has to look exactly a certain way. You can kind of just make things up, it's a little bit more fun. I'm gonna do that to the shell over here as well, kind of go in between. Periwinkle. Make a little, little accents on these shells. Um, the next thing we're going to do is add to this starfish. Now we're gonna do some kind of light yellow um, highlights on him. So we're gonna take our yellow again, give ourselves another little dot of it where we've got some space. Gonna, you can keep what's in your brush, that's totally fine. Just kind of mix it off to the side with a little bit of white. Keeping uh, the paint that's in your brush is helpful because it kind of just keeps the colors similar to each other as you go. Um, the only time you need to rinse your brush out is if you're laying something dry or if you're switching to a very different color, you don't want to make it muddy so you can clean your brush that way. But if you're making a color that's similar to the color that you're using, it kind of gives you more cohesiveness if you keep a little bit of that paint on your brush. Alright, so we've mixed this nice soft yellow. I'm actually going to make it a tiny bit lighter. I'm going to use my smaller brush for this because it's going to be these little bumps on this uh, starfish here. I'm use this little one. We're just going to kind of use our brush and make these little dabs kind of going down along each um, little arm of this starfish. You don't have to make them a certain shape, just quick little marks with your brush, kind of let the body of the brush do the work. You don't have to be a certain number, we're just kind of making it look like a very textured starfish. You know, like when they're all rough on the top, get those little bumps all over them. Uh, when you get to the middle, you can kind of, kind of just fill it in like that. I'm gonna take some of this yellow. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more white. We're gonna add more accents to our little shells down here. I'm gonna add a little over top that orange, kind of give it some depth. Do the 
same here on my little shelf. Pools is periwinkle. I like to kind of, every time I mix a color, and there's some highly textured items in the painting, I like to kind of draw those colors and pull those colors into each item. Kind of makes the painting a little bit more cohesive overall. Kind of carry that theme. All right, this is another good place to pause because um, we will have to let all of this dry before we put a nice cool palm frond over the top. It's gonna be a really pretty composition. Um, but we will need to be able to layer on top of this stuff, so you do want it to dry completely before putting another color up. Um, so we are going to pause here and just rinse our brushes, and we'll come right back to that. All right, we are back. Um, this should all be dry now. We're going to add our palm frond over top. So we're gonna be mixing a green. Um, this green, we're gonna want it to be yellow heavy. So um, this area where we were mixing this kind of bluish color, we're just gonna mix red on top of that. It should be dry now on your plate. So we're gonna do a fairly large glob of yellow and only a tiny bit of blue. So we're gonna put the kind of the blue off to the side. And you will need a little bit of white as well. I still have some on my palette that's not dry. Uh, if you don't have any left, uh, just add a little bit to your plate. So, let's see. I'm gonna just kind of slowly incorporate a little bit of this blue into this big glob of yellow until we get a, a green that we like. And actually, we might have gotten this on the first try. It's kind of a nice olive -y. I like the greens to be yellow heavy. They just tend to be a little brighter. Um, the more blue, the, um, the darker the green will be. Um, but the more yellow will be a nice warm green. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white to this. Just a little bit, just to give it some body. Um, we don't wanna make this significantly lighter. We just want it to be nice and opaque because we're gonna be painting it on top of stuff we've already painted, so. Um, if you feel more comfortable drawing this frond out with a smaller brush, that's totally fine. Um, I'm gonna use the large brush because I just like that. But you might wanna draw it with your smaller brush. So we're gonna come from this corner up here and we're just gonna draw a line like this. It's gonna be the center stem here. From this uh, end of the stem, I'm gonna do this leaf shape, kind of coming off like that. Fill that in. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit longer. And you can sort of make these fronds going off in different directions. You can do them the same as me. You can do them a little different, however you feel. I'm gonna put another one over here. I'm gonna, you can go over top your shells. I'm gonna try and not cover the whole shell because I don't wanna cover up everything I did. But if it goes over top a little bit, that's fine too. Um, this color is not super opaque. So if you find that you can see through it, you just let it dry and we'll put another layer on top. You do have to let it dry fully, otherwise you will peel up some of the paint you've already put down. So make this frond kind of overlap this starfish here. And you just want to do a nice curvy leaf shape. And do another one here. Off in the corner like that. 
Now again, this might be pretty light. Um, you can see, like here, you can see my starfish through the palm frond. Um, I'm gonna just thicken up what I've got down here, but as we go, if you are not happy with the opaqueness level of your green, just let it dry. Brush another layer on top when it's dried. Um, but if you're okay with things kind of being a little looser, you can just go for that. The fun thing about paint is that it's not photography, so you don't have to capture everything perfectly. You can kind of have fun with it. Cool. I'm going to let my green dry a little bit while we do some other things. Um, that way I can put another little layer on toward the end. I'm just going to rinse my brush to the next step which is putting some highlights on these this frond but because it is not super opaque quite yet we're gonna hold off on that step until we've gotten really happy with how this green looks so then the next step we're gonna do instead is we're gonna mix a nice dark brown color to kind of um, accentuate little areas of stuff we've already done so the easiest way to think of how to mix brown is um, purple and yellow will make brown. So essentially all three of the primary colors will make brown. It just, depending on how much yellow, red, or blue you have in it, will kind of affect the color of brown that you make. So I tend to like making browns that are more of a sienna, um, that have more yellow and reds in them. So have some yellow here and some red, so I'm gonna add to that. And we're just gonna try and make a nice um, warm brown color. Um, you, this is also where you're going to have a little bit of black. You need a little bit. So we have yellow, red, and blue on our palette here. So we're gonna mostly, I'm just gonna mix in this orange area because we're not really using that anymore. I'm gonna take all of my yellow, take a little bit of my red, kind of mix that together. Make this nice kind of orange color. And then we're just gonna incorporate a tiny bit of blue. Now if we had purples in a tube, in a, I mean we could, you could get a brown paint in a tube and you can, that would work just fine. But if you're ever mixing and you've got multiple colors and tubes. Purple, slowly incorporated into a body of yellow is the easiest way to make a nice brown. I'm gonna put a little bit of white into it so we can kind of see what color we've got so far. It's actually not bad. It's not quite as dark as I want it though, so we're gonna add a little bit more pigment in. Just gonna add a little more red. I'm gonna add a little more yellow. I actually have some over here on my plate. I'm gonna add like a little bit like that. Um, feel free to add more to your plate though if you don't have it yet. And then to make this as dark as we need it, um, we're gonna add a tiny bit of black. So the black paints, even the cheap ones, are fairly heavily pigmented. So you really only need like a little dot on your palette usually for an entire painting, unless you're doing a big field of black. So I just put a little tiny bit. It's much easier to just add it little tiny bits at a time than having to go backwards and lighten everything up. Um, because black will also dull out your colors. It will mute things as you make them. Okay, we're getting this nice, much darker brown now. We want it to be pretty dark so that we can, it's, you know, helps create some contrast in this painting. This is all pretty soft, so 
so we want to be able to put a little bit of detail in here. So I'm going to use my smaller brush for this. Um, essentially all we're doing with this color is we're going to create some uh, little details on the shelves. We're going to add a little bit of detail to the sand and then we're just going to create some loose outlines for the frond as well. Um, so let's start with the shells. So we're going to do a little edge here underneath this shell. Already it pops it out so much more. I'm going to kind of make some lines going up these ridges here. You don't want to outline everything. You just want to kind of strategically place little accents of this dark brown. Um, for our periwinkle shell, I'm going to kind of re-emphasize this opening here on the shell. Maybe make it a little darker so you can see that it's like a hole going into the shell. I love how it's kind of small, so we'll kind of lift it up so you can see. It's a good way to outline these little ridges too that we have been making this whole time. Kind of use it to make a little shadow under the shell like this. Cool, it's already popping out much more. Let me do this the shell here as well. Kind of emphasize some of that texture across. I'll bring it up into our starfish like this. Um, I'm going to do underneath my little legs here, the arms and legs, arms and legs. And then maybe do a little bit down on, kind of on the top of this starfish like that. It feels nice. Do some teeny details, just kind of, so that it looks like it has a nice texture. You just want to kind of keep your brush soft and gentle because the harder you push down, the, the bigger your lines will be. So if you're going for these little tiny textures, you want to just keep your brush light, light handed. Um, down here in the sand, We'll just kind of use the body of the brush and we will be adding uh, more to this as well so don't get too carried away we're just you know sand sometimes has these like dark little pebbles in it or you know it's it's not just this creamy yellow color obviously so and then just kind of sprinkle some little textures like that and then the last thing we're going to use it on is this palm frond, which we're not quite done with yet, but we can sort of get some accent marks in there. If you want to put a little bit on this side of the stem. Um, I'm like pretty loose with my um, outlines. Don't need them to be super um, tight or I don't know, you don't need them to look really, really clean. I mean, it's up to you if you want to get very meticulous about it. Um, obviously, your prerogative. I like things that look more like a painting. It's a little less pressure and it looks nice, I think. to fully outline just you know just making it stand out a little more okay. by now our green should be pretty good so I'm gonna mix a little extra of it 
um, on my palette here and kind of get a little more coverage than what I have going on. out our brush really well. My brush rolled into some of my paint, which is always fun. Okay, so let's mix this green again. If you mix it a little, if you have to mix more, you mix it a little differently. It's actually not a bad thing. Um, you can get a little variety in your palette that way. And that way everything isn't just black colors. If you mix a little lighter, a little darker, all it does is just add kind of cool variety to your painting. So I'm gonna make sure my palm frond leaves are nice and opaque. Much better. It's already looking better. So the nice thing about acrylic is it dries so fast, so you can, if you don't like something, you just let it dry and paint right over it. Pretty low state. I'm actually going to carry a little bit of this green into these shells as well. I think that actually would look kind of cool. You know, do a little here, a little here, maybe a little on the starfish. I like carrying little accents of each color throughout the piece. It's kind of get that nice cohesive look. Probably kind of hard to see, it's pretty subtle in the video, but. So the accents for our palm fronds, basically all we're gonna do is take that green and mix a little more white into it, just make a slightly lighter version of that green. And we're just gonna put like a little sheen on these leaves here. stem. Perfect. It's looking nice. Do a little clean on this edge here. take my small brush, dip into that light green, and I'm going to use it for a little bit more of this sand as well. And then just make a little bit of variety here. So we're almost done. Um, the last thing we're going to do is add some little white accents. Um, we're gonna put some sea foam kind of coming in through here. Um, a little bit of white accents in the sand and on the shells, and that's basically it. Just to make it look like some nice shimmery water. So we're gonna use our smaller brush for this. Um, if you have any areas that are considerably wet still, I would pause the video and let it dry. Um, I think mine's pretty good to go, so I'm just gonna show you what to do here. Uh, I still have some white on my palette, but you will need white. You want it just straight white onto your brush. So we're going to just kind of make some white accents that make this look a little more like water. And if your starfish is dry, I'm gonna put some over top like that, so it kind of looks like it's under the water. And I'm making this nice and shiny here. So you just want some really soft, 
Um, it's okay if the white is not opaque, it's okay if it's a little watered down. That's actually will work in your favor. Um, if, or if it's just kind of see-through, you kind of want that look. Um, for the foam down here, I'm gonna do the same thing, put a little on this edge. We're also gonna put some kind of dots so it looks a little more shiny, a little more foamy. Not to be perfectly round or anything, you're just kind of using your brush, the shape of your brush to dictate how this looks. Just want it to look like a nice shimmering seashore. I'm gonna put a little bit of this white in the sand over here as well. Gonna make this sand a nice texture variety to it. So that's not just this flat color. Nice. The last accents we're going to make are on these shells and on these fronds. Um, since I just put this light green, we're gonna chill on that. We're gonna come to these shells first. Just so it has a little bit of chance to dry. We don't pull up any of that paint. So on this little shell, we're gonna make kind of a little accent all the way up. Kind of looks like the sun's hitting it. It's pretty shiny. I'm gonna do the same thing to this periwinkle. Just right across, like in a, in a line up the shell. Maybe on this edge as well. It's very simple, just little strokes, but it does make it look like a nice little shiny shell. We're gonna do the same thing on this shell. I'm gonna kind of pick a spot and sort of go all the way around like that. I'm gonna do the same thing down here as well. Maybe a little bit up on this edge, like a nice stripy shell. We're gonna come back and do a little, a little bit on these starfish as well. Just kinda, just a couple little dots here and there, kinda give it a little texture. I'm gonna kinda keep them up toward the top of the starfish since that's like the highest part. Just kinda, a couple little accent dots. And then, last but not least, these palm fronds is feeling a little dry. Just gonna quickly swipe over that light area. So it looks like the light's catching it. And there we go, we got a nice little seashore painting. Um, if you wanted to, you could add more bubbles kind of coming out here. You could add another shell. Um, you can always put two fronds coming off. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, you can leave it as is, but there's lots of ways to modify things. You'd add like a little crab right here. That would be cute. Um, but this is the basic um, painting for what we've got. Um, we will see you on the next video. Um, we'll be doing a nice little fall painting um, you will be using all the same supplies, so anything you used today, you'll be using the same thing um, for the next one. It will have a lot of orange in it, so if you don't feel like pre-mixing or like mixing oranges from scratch, you want to get um, out of the tube orange, that would be fine as well, but we will be mixing browns and oranges since it's a more of a fall palette. All right, I hope you had fun, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!